Mm. Wow. 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 You are your own worst enemy. The fear that you might have in your mind to take some risk and make some decisions, it can block so many opportunities. Hi, good evening. This is Andrea Rich coming to you from ATM Together today. Thank you for joining me while we go over another phenomenal testimony from one of our clients out in Orlando, Florida. Daniel, are you there? I am. Hi. Hi. Thank you again for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a mechanical engineer, so um, that's my nine to five. I've been working in the HVAC industry since 98 or 99. And, um, you know, I support my family and, and I've always known that, um, you know, the, the nine to five would never be enough for me. Um, so I've always, you know, envisioned, um, just taking a step beyond and, and owning, uh, my own business so that I can own more of my own time. At this juncture of your life, why is passive income important to you? Primarily because I have a family. I mean, um, you mean it's always been important because my, my dad was a business owner. My dad was a mechanic. That's how I kind of ventured into mechanical engineering. And, you know, most of my brothers were all like mechanically inclined somehow. So, um, you know, I, I got it from him. I learned business watching him, learn how to conduct business watching him, learn how to use my hands watching him. So um, a lot of that was kind of downloaded as a kid. And like I said, I always knew that that you know, the nine to five, it wouldn't be my final destination. It was just a, you know, a, a vehicle that, that I would use. I just didn't know how long it would take to get to that point yeah. where I could say, you know, cause I've done a couple of different things and, um, you know, I can't say, you know, they failed cause they were just different phases in right. times of my life where I've done different things. So, um, at this point I decided to, to go back into, um, entrepreneurship. So here I am. How was engaging the ATM in it, in and of itself? How was that process for you? In terms of, you know, getting into it, learning, you know, the, the steps, the programming was, it was excellent. The training videos, everything was there. And yeah. when I pulled out the checks, the check sheet, and when I started going through the check sheet, I said, wow, they set everything up according yeah. to, you know, your your need. I mean, doesn't matter what type of person you are. If you use the yeah. check sheet, you'll be yeah, fine. Definitely. You know, and, and you're using it in conjunction with the videos, you'll be fine. And then you have a support system. Yeah. So, you know, you guys provide everything that really you need to kind of just home run, um, you know, your 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 install. And my first one was, I guess the biggest challenge was was getting inside of a porcelain floor. Um, okay. You know, I'm I'm pretty familiar with tools. Like I said, my dad was a mechanic, so I'm very familiar with tools. So I'm comfortable. Yeah. So even if even if it's my first time performing an action, I still look professional because I know my way around tools. Right? Exactly. But you know that porcelain floor was <laughs> it was a little bit of a challenge. Right. However, there was a video where I forget who it was one of the guys explained that like if you're going into porcelain ceramic tile, yeah, this is what you need. And I knew in my head I needed that diamond cutter. So um, you know I was able to, to to go out and get that and complete the job and um, everything worked out. What appealed to you? What piqued your in interest about this industry? One of the things is is money. And I don't mean it in the way one might think and just earning money. I'm always interested in how money is made. You know what I mean? And how yeah. money circulates inside of our system. And I've always wanted to be a like a bridge or a mediary inside of that system somehow. Yeah. I've always known this, I've always known this. And I might not be a bank per se, you know what I mean? Or I might right. not be somebody who prints the money per se, but at the same time, I've always wanted to be inside of the system. And I wanted to be a mediary instead of being the one that's always in need, that has to be in search of, yeah. you know what I mean? I wanted to help yeah. bridge others between, um, be, or be the bridge between others, you know, um, and their resources. Who would you tell about the ATM Together team? 
there are a few people I've, I've already, you know, spoken um, to about it. Um, two of my brothers, they, they live in different states, um, but two of my brothers, I've already, you know, communicated with them. I think they're, here's the thing about me. I've done several things in my life and, and I'm comfortable with failing. I'm comfortable and I'm not speaking failure into my business. I'm not doing yeah, that. Yeah. What I'm saying is that um, I am comfortable with um, with taking with taking some things as lessons, right? Right. Because right. those lessons are, are going to inform my future decisions, right? So yes. I'm I'm very um, guarded. I'm comfortable with with my choices, but I'm guarded in who I share them with. So I really yes. only talk to like minded individuals who try to also be that bridge or fill in those gaps. Um, right. You know, and, and, and those who might look at um, life through a different lens and, and understand that, you know, you can't really get far trading your time for money, you know. Exactly. So um, so I've only really spoken about it to them. But at the same time, and, and also one of my cousins who, who actually used to, um, I won't say the company he worked for, but he used to repair safes for several years okay. on the East Coast. So um, it's a pretty big company. So I was actually consulting him um when i was going into um you know the business and he was telling me what i would need the tools that i right. would need to, to get you know the atm installed and how some things may not you know he, he walked me through everything and, and it was funny because everything he said it aligned with um the training videos when it came to the install so i knew he knew right. what he was talking about so i've been communicating with him about it and, and i wanted to say like those who i've spoken to i i know they're watching me to see my success with it exactly. and they're hearing my excitement about it um and and they're also seeing you know exactly how this might be beneficial for them as well so there right. are a couple of people i have in mind already when, when you ask me the other question another thing i i felt to mention of of why i wanted to get into this business you you see like i have a board behind me and, and i have like certain areas on the board where i've written down i usually keep a list and and two of my brothers know this I keep a list of of ideas and entrepreneur mm -hmm. ideas that um, someday I might launch them. Who knows, I might give the idea to a friend, which I've right. done in the past because they were ready and they had the resources. Right. And I'm good at just, I can find the niches and I can find the needs. I'm I'm really good at that, right? Right. So on my board, I actually had written out vending an ATM mm. on my board several years ago. Wow. Right before the pandemic, that was one of the things I would say. Some of the other things I've written down, but I won't say them. Right, <laughs> they're right. on the board though. Right. And so I was looking at while I'm holding my nine to five, how can I venture back into entrepreneurship um, at as low of a cost as possible, right. with the least amount of time? Because as you know, when you're trying to start a business, run a business, it takes it takes resources. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you have a family, when you already have a nine to five that's very yeah. demanding, like I do, because I work on the sales side as a mechanical okay. engineer. So it's okay. it's very demanding. And I work in Chicago. So the the, the grind never stops right. you know, right. in terms of work. So it's it's really hard. So I said I wanted something that I can that I can I could work in conjunction with my nine to five right you know so that's why i was a little bit longer completing some of the uh the assigned um you know uh tasks on the checklist right. and, and getting back to my team right away just because i had to you know take my time i had to complete projects then i had to get some other things going i had to make sure the the, the resources were secured and all of that so right. everything everything came together but um that was one of the other main main reasons was that when I looked at my list of, of ideas and things mm -hmm. that I could do, vending an ATM was like at was the top of the answer. list. Okay. Yes. So, you know, not a lot of people as pragmatic and precise as you are as an engineer would venture out into a business virtually. So hmm. how was that? How did you address the fact that you started a business with people you've never even met. <laughs> okay, so again, everything ties together. I don't believe anything happens by coincidence. Yeah. So I used to live in the Chicago area. I grew up there. I've been working remote since 2010. Okay. So I've worked with the company that I'm with longer as a remote employee than yeah. I have 
you know, been with the company because I moved the company like 18 years. Right. And I've been here in Orlando for like 13 of the 18 years. Wow. So the idea of, of working virtually, working with people I don't know, because obviously since I've been here, there have been a lot of, you know, turnover in different departments and different yeah. teams. Most of my team, I don't know back home anymore. Okay. Um, and I don't have to travel back home as often. So it's it's not it's not something that's that's um, altogether foreign with me. Is it was just a matter of um, when I when I saw Paul, um, I, and, and I I linked on to him through like a gram feed. Right. Somehow I I saw it and Paul was talking, and I can I can tell when some people are being truthful and when they're not. You right. know what I mean? Even if it's somebody I don't know, even if it's through the internet. And I looked and then I started researching him a little bit. Let me see who, yes. if he says, if he is who he says he is. So exactly. I started looking and I'm like, okay, he's saying some things I've heard before. So that, okay, that's a good good sign. Right. And um, so it, it wasn't like, it was completely unfamiliar. Right. Um, it was just a matter of me being willing to take the risk with you guys because I'm, I'm used to taking risks. Okay. Uh, but I take more calculated risk. I don't mind a gamble. If I right. know the gamble is going to work in my favor, I'll roll the dice. Now, my final question for you this evening, Daniel, is there someone um, watching this video or there will be someone watching this video that may have questions, that may think this is a scheme, that may mm -hmm. think that um, this is too good to be true. If you knew that person sitting on the fence, what would you tell them to help them make the same informed decision that you did? Mm. Wow. 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 You are your own worst enemy. Ooh, say that again. You are your own worst enemy. The fear that you might have in your mind to take some risk and make some decisions, that fear will keep you paralyzed in life. That fear and that doubt in yourself, it can, it can block so many opportunities. Mm. Um, you have to be willing to look the fear in the face yeah. because really that's what it is. It's your own fear. You know, it's 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 nothing else because there are people who might see this or watch this and think, I can't take a risk on this, but they'll go and buy lottery tickets every week and they have for the last 10 years. So true. They'll, they'll drive a car knowing the brakes are bad. You're taking a risk on your life every day. So true. You understand like there, there are risks that you take that you don't understand that you're gambling with your life versus a risk that you can take that can change your life for the better forever mm -hmm. so you have to be willing to just see and identify the fear and the doubt that's in your own mind and and a lot of times we don't we don't we don't readily identify it because we become comfortable with it yes and once you become comfortable with the fear it's hard to see it's fear that's keeping me from making a decision that could change because for me it was um, like I said, I'm used to risk. I'm used to, right. to, to doing certain things. But at this point, I knew I wanted to do it. But I just had, again, vending an ATM has been on my board for like at least four years. Wow. Been there, right? And I've been looking at so many other things. You know, I have kids in private school and I'm like, I just kept telling my wife, I have to do something. If right. I don't do what I feel like I need to do, I am going to be miserable and it's going to affect my health. Right. That's so because true. I've been I've been sick before because of stress. And some of the stress is just related to fear and not and being in a position where I've allowed the fear to control my decision making. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Absolutely. Welcome aboard and we are looking forward to you scaling your business. Glad to be here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daniel.